I want to talk about a fun little uh, dice drafting game that I was able to play this Sunday called Noctiluca. 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 There, there's a very specific way that you pronounce it. I like to pronounce it as Noct- Noctiluca. Is how I was told, and then I was heard it was not. In any case, it doesn't matter because Noctiluca is a game by Shem Phillips, whose name might sound familiar because he is the designer behind the Of the North Sea games. Ah, uh, that's where that name comes yep, from. Yep. So yes. Raiders, um, Architects, soon to be, I think it's either Knights or Paladins. It's Paladins. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, of course, Noctiluca. So in this game, uh, you are, as a person, you found this lake and you are diving deep into this lake and you are capturing these cute little Noctiluca, which are little, um, uh, like, I wouldn't say there's like sea creatures or water creatures or what have you, but they're these cute little things that are used for healing. And you have a bunch of different jars that contain different recipes for different Noctiluca that uh, can be populated and filled and then sold off for points. And you have only uh, 24 total plays in the game divvied out amongst all players to be able to pick up as much Noctiluca as you can, fill them up in bottles and sell them for points. Um, So uh, how this will work is that each Noctiluca are... Um, represented by dice in this game. And these dice are really nice dice akin to, I would say, Sagrada dice. So for people that have played uh, Sagrada, uh, you should feel right at home for the type of different dice that they have in this game. And uh, you have um, this uh, board that's shaped like a pond. And there's all these different sections that are split into kind of like an outer rim and an inner rim. And uh, on the outside of the rim, you are going to place five of each die randomly into each little section. And then in the inner rim, you're going to put four of each die into that. And then there's like the core, which is just like the... Uh, I don't know, middle of the pond or the lake and nothing goes in there. And then on the outside, you have these little beaches and those beaches are like your standpoints or your points where you launch and you are able to then go diving for these Noctiluca and you go from, you pick basically a row of different um, areas and you pick a row of one specific number and you then accumulate those Noctiluca of that number. So say for instance, uh, you pick the number five, you pick a path that you wanna go to and you pick up each number five dice, no matter what color, uh, into your hand and you place them into your jars. So whatever Noctiluca or dice that you don't end up using, you give to your opponent. And if they're able to use it, they can put them into their jar. And then if they can't do it, it just gets passed around the table until eventually if there's any left over, it gets put back into the box. And then your pawn for where you specifically launched from to go diving in this pond stays there. And so then the other person has to pick from the other 11 spots that exist on the board to be able to go diving. So these different pawns, these little action pawns you get are divvied up equally amongst the amount of players, which I believe I think four is the maximum amount because each specific person will get like their equal amount of pawns. um, And then they're going to get like two jars And then they're given a secret color that helps towards with scoring at the end of the game. Um, So perhaps you might have the blue, you know, blue Noctiluca or green, purple or orange. And this is how the game works. So again, you do a whole round. Every single action pawn is put around um, the specific board. Uh, You name a die, a, a number on the die, collect all the dice, put them in your jars. Anything that you fill up, you pick up this token that gives you amount of points and is counted for other end game scoring. And, um... Uh, You continue around the board until all 12 spots um, have been taken up. And then you repeat the whole process again. You go for two rounds, and then you just count up points. And this was a little fun drafting game, I will say. It was a little fun little drafting game. It's just got, um... Uh... It, it, the the interesting mecha- uh, mechanism behind this is this whole thing where you're looking at this board and you're looking at your jars and your and each jar has just a color right they're not looking for a specific number so the number is what you're looking to pull the colors and then you're just matching the color to the jar or the the objects in the jar and it doesn't matter what number they are it's just how you are able to pull them off of the specific pond and so In later parts of the rounds, in late round one and late round two, what's interesting is you get to these 
So not only do you have like a shrinking action board, but you get into these tight situations in which you know you need to have like a blue and a purple to finish out a thing, but you're also going to pick up like two greens that you can't use that you have to pass to your opponents that are going to use it. And that becomes like really like you don't want to do it, but then sometimes you have to pull the trigger and do it anyways. Is like, you know, there wasn't anything more you can do. So it kind of gets a little bit um, claustrophobic in terms of like mm. being able to make these choices to things that you aren't feeling 100% too comfortable with, but end up working with, you know, finding, you know, like rationalizing your head, like, okay, I, I can still make this work even when I do pass it off to your opponent. But then it's like, sometimes you really pick that right number that gets you all the right dice for your, um, for your jars. And you just feel great as you just plop them into each one of your specific mm. jars. It feels really good. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, almost, I almost like, uh, the marble game, a potion explosion. If you've ever played that, uh yes i would say so the maybe kind of a little bit All right. yeah kind of um i know i th- i would say that it, it hits on it on a very broad level but i wouldn't say that it like i don't know yeah yeah it, yeah it's a it's, it's, a, it's a very broad like correlation i suppose yeah um, uh th- the question is is would you play this game with my parents yeah oh yeah just, i'm just kidding i don't Yes, I would. Whether it be your parents or whether it be your <laughs> oh, oh, okay, parents, just s- or, someone's parents. Yeah, right, someone's right. parents. You know, they come walking <laughs> in and be like, "Hey, y'all, you want to play some fun dice drafting?" And they'd be like, "Why are you in our house?" <laughs> <Who are laughs> exactly. You? I just creep yeah. on the. I'm the board game man. We're gonna play some <laughs> board games. <laughs> Let's play a game about weird sea creatures. <laughs> You know this, this, this game is about bears. <coughs> right. Yeah, this, did you know that this game is about bears? <laughs> One uh, of the bear on the cover. Anyway, um, yeah, it sounds great. Uh, also, just full disclosure again, um, I know both the art director and the illustrator of this game. So Brie Larson did the artwork for this game, and uh, my good friend Sam Shimoda, who taught me this game, also art directed it. And just to be like fully disclosed like this is all their work and whether i knew them or not i still think the production values are very high on this game i think the box look great uh, i think it looks really enticing uh to be able to go and be like wow like this is a really interesting theme um that i haven't seen before and sure it does take some liberties in terms of like being able to be like hey these sea creatures are dice you know it's not like too thematic in that sense but i mean hey just have an imagination right like you can imagine little like i don't know eel like little like <laughs> eel things or little squidlets that are in and around i don't know i i got a i got a just a strong sense of it and i i dug it i dug the game a lot now yeah is it something that i would probably break out more than five times i don't know Maybe. I think if someone was really jazzing for some Noctiluca, I'd be like, sure, like, let's totally play it. I'd be down for pretty much anything. Um, but it's like, it's one of those games where, like, I'm really kind of, gl- I'm definitely glad and should definitely be in the category of you need to play this game. As far mm-hmm. as picking it up, like, right away, I don't think it necessarily, in my opinion, is like a must buy. I definitely think it's like a must play. And if you just have the game group that just likes these really like sub hour long games, 30, 45 minutes, easy teaches. Same with Baron park. I would actually qualify this in the same type of umbrella. I think this Mm -hmm. game would be perfect for, for some groups. And again, I think I just looking for something a little bit more, just a bit more meteor. And I, I, and I I think like right now I'm totally digging the Vital Lacerda games you know, the, the point salad right. games, the thing where yeah. sh- just stuff is happening everywhere. I think that's just my jam. I still know, though, uh, when I see good games and stuff like that, I can definitely recognize them. I just don't know. Uh, I, just, I just have to be more careful when adding these games to my collection because definitely this would be it. But would it be brought out a lot? I don't know. I want to have games see their time on the table versus collecting dust on the shelf. And that's why I just bring that up, right? So. That's true. Okay, so it's interesting you say that maybe after five times you might be done with this game. Uh, I wonder if there's ever going to be a backlash of that mindset when games are being produced. Now, I'm not saying that that's what they're thinking of when they're putting this game out, right? But 
I would love to know on average how many times games are being played. Uh, I was just looking into Outer Rim, the new FFG Star Wars game, and the consensus I'm seeing in those places that there's just not a lot of content, and there's like it's not made to have a long shelf life because then they'll have expansions out. No, I'm not against that business model at all. I think it's I'm totally fine with it, but I wonder if there's ever going to be like this backlash of, you know, I want my games to have oh like staying power i guess like have staying yeah. power after half a dozen plays <sighs> and see right? it's really weird because i have that argument with gloomhaven yeah like i i know people that have went into that game and they are ready for the forgotten circles expansion right right i totally get it but for me like gloomhaven is almost gloomhaven is like almost too much game for me like that yeah. it reminds me of like a fallout game where i get like super intrigued in the world and everything that you can do. And as a completionist uh, in, in those types of video games, like that type of, I don't know how much I can do and not kind of having a focus. And I, I seem to be problematic in terms of finding my own focus. I just Mm -hmm. can't, I can't really wrap my head around it. And there go, ergo, I just kind of end up like just folding up and not really doing much. So I think Gloomhaven falls in that same circle where it's like Gloomhaven for the money absolutely 110% gives you what you pay for and more. Um, but it's also too like scary to tackle it, like to be married to a game that long. I know. And knowing that it's like, you know, you need to, I mean, sure. You don't need you, you don't need to have a table set up, but it sure does help. <laughs> like, and I'm, right. I'm not right. I'm not. Yeah. So, and, and again, and like, I'm one who likes variety in my board games. Like, I, I like playing a game multiple times in a row, yeah. But then playing something else, and then totally coming back to that game like six months or a year later. Yeah. Like, I don't know. And it feels like a new game to me at that point, right? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I would definitely say for me that I'm like 100 percent cult of the new. Yeah, and that I love yeah. to see what people are coming out these days. And I, right. I'm really like even just thinking back between how big miniatures were two, three years ago to where they are now. Sure, there's still big miniature games coming out, but I don't think they are prominent as they were. And right. it's just really curious how the ebb and flow of the board game community has gotten to. And that I think we're seeing a lot more of these kinds of games. Granted, Baron Park has been under a reprint, but Noctiluca in particular just being this really quick like here's what it is it's gonna make you think you're gonna do it it looks great bam it's here perfect um and then there's just some but again where i'm at is just there's something like i'm looking forward to that might need more right that's it that's pretty much it it. yeah i get it so nice 